the Duchess hosted her baby shower at Five Star The Mark Hotel in New York in February. It has been revealed that to avoid looking as though she was enjoying the media's attention too much, Meghan requested that hotel staff let her leave via the service entrance. The revelation comes after documents from the U.S. State Department explain the dynamic behind the move. According to the report, the VIP Meghan explained that her intent was to change the literal optics of the departure, making it appear that she was at least attempting to sneak out of the hotel in photos rather than exiting through the main entrance and giving the potential impression that she was enjoying the media attention. Her demand, as per the report, resulted in more carnage than if she had followed the original plan of action, as vehicles had to be moved to line up at the new door. The baby shower panned out as a high-end event, with Meghan brushing shoulders with A-listers, a scene she would have been well used to considering her Hollywood background. Among the guests were Serena Williams and Amal Clooney, as well as Meghan's best friend Jessica Mulroney, and American TV anchor Gail King. The escapade brought New York streets to a standstill, causing widespread traffic jams and general disruptions. Both fans and press lined up at barriers on Manhattan's east side for the glitzy event, the full cost of which was not disclosed by the State Department. Meghan's move to escape apparent media attention, however, proved fruitless, as the former Suits actor attracted a hefty amount of reprival from several figures. While some complained about the baby shower being too pricey, others complained about it being held in New York, which ultimately left many UK royal fans down and out in their plans to catch a glimpse of a pregnant Meghan. Queen Elizabeth II's former spokesman, Dickie Arbiter, was particularly contemptuous of the event. He said, Baby showers, it's very much an American thing, we don't do it here in the UK. It was a bit over the top in terms of expense and the way she got there. Though the State Department never officially released the cost of the day, according to Cosmopolitan, the event came in at around $200,000, 161 pounds, 860. The UK public did not pay a penny for the baby shower, however, with Meghan's friends the ones who footed the bill. Ms. Williams organized the event, also paying for Meghan's $75,000, 60,000 pounds, a night penthouse suite. Friends didn't pay for the Duke and Duchess Frogmore cottage renovations, though, with the public paying the bill that racked up a whopping 2.4 million pounds, 2.9 million dollars. The cottage had been remodeled from five separate living quarters into one large official residence for the couple and Archie. Public funds paid for the cost of replacing heating, electric, gas and water main systems, as well as replacing ceiling beams and floor joists. The baby shower's opulence didn't end with the end bill and luxurious penthouse stay. Meghan also flew to New York City via a private jet, which would have set her back $100,000 pounds. Leaving through the service entrance of the hotel, Meghan went off to the extravagant polo bar for dinner with friends. In another bid to evade the cameras, Meghan ordered her drivers to change the route to the restaurant despite it being just 1.5 miles away. Paparazzi still managed to snap pictures of her entering and leaving the restaurant, much to the dismay of Meghan. The State Department files also told of how Meghan changed her mind about where she wanted to have dinner at the last minute, as her first choice, Flora Bar, had a large glass ceiling that paparazzi could take photographs through. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's son Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor lacks the bump up in life cousins Prince George and Princess Charlotte and will need to earn his place in the world. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry welcomed their son Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor on May 6, 2019 after months of growing frenzy among the public. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex chose to forego giving their baby an official title and Archie is expected to be known as master rather than prince. Royal commentator Omid Scobie suggested the lack of a title could force the newest addition to the royal family to earn his place in the world without some of the bump-up cousins Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis have. Speaking to Yahoo's The Royal Box, Mr. Scobie said, he doesn't have the title, he really doesn't have the same bump-up that maybe perhaps the Cambridge children do. He will have to go out and earn his place in society and education is very much part of that. 
Regardless of your grades you do need to be well read, articulate, you need to have knowledge of the world, and that means being out there in the real world and learning. But Mr. Scobie conceded Archie would not be the first member of the royal family required to invest in his education to make his way in the world. Kate Middleton earned two as an AB at A-levels and later graduated with a 2-colon-1 degree in history of art from the University of St. Andrews. She then went on to work for clothing chain Jigsaw and her family's business before marrying Prince William and becoming the Duchess of Cambridge. Meghan Markle graduated from Northwestern University with a double major in theater and international relations ahead of launching her acting career. Mr. Scobie said, they had to go and earn their place in the working world, they had to get the right qualifications. With William, I think he got ABC in his A-levels, for most people that wouldn't get you into St. Andrews. For him it did. Dr. Jonathan Spanger at Manchester Metropolitan University said the freedom a title less life may have influenced Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's decision not to have Archie styled. Dr. Spanger said, People who are not HRHs are free to go off and start business ventures and companies and whatever they like. Harry and Meghan's baby could grow up to be a bit more normal, or as normal as they can be in this media-centered world. But once Prince Charles becomes king, the baby will automatically become HRH because Archie will then be the grandchild of a reigning sovereign. A patent letter King George V issued in 1917 recognized to the male line descendants of the monarch the right to hold a title. The Queen has since issued an update to the letter, granting the right also to Princess Charlotte. Upon the birth of Zara Tyndall, née Phillips, the Queen did offer Princess Anne a royal title for her only daughter. But Princess Anne famously turned down the generous offer. The children of the Earl and Countess of Wessex, Lady Louise Mountbatten Windsor and Viscount Severn, are both HRHs. However, with the Queen's agreement, they do not use the titles of Princess and Prince.